Do we have sound now? Let me check my sound and see what's going on. Audio, audio. I, I see that I have sound now. Are you good? Okay, double check for me. It's telling me that it's working. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, and I'm so glad we got that sound corrected quickly. Sometimes this microphone is just a little bit sensitive, and if I just wiggle the plug, it works. So anyway, today I am so excited because I am in the middle of so many projects. So I want to update you on a few projects that I have going on, and I want to get working on my Under the Sea Critter Quilt. You can see that I've put some of the design elements on that I have worked on in previous Facebook Live sessions. So there's a few things that I want to do today before we get to those critters. The first thing that I wanted to tell you is, oh, first of all, let me welcome everybody that's here. So I see greetings from the Scudic Peninsula. That must be Bev. Welcome, Bev. Welcome, Anita. Hey, Mary. Nice to see you here. If you have not given StreamYard permission to see your name, go ahead and put your name after your comment. Good morning, Ellie. Welcome. Okay, fantastic. So we've got quite a few people watching live. And of course, you can always watch the replay. So it's the replays that I wanted to tell you about. My camera also seems to be delayed, so hopefully it's all working for you. But right now my, my uh, camera is not matching up with my words and it's very distracting when I'm watching myself talk, but it's not connecting with the words. Um, what did I wanna to talk to you about today? Well, how will you find previous Facebook Live or um, YouTube sessions because these are on my Facebook Live, they're on my Facebook page, they are also on YouTube. So all of these Sewing and Slippers episodes, we've started numbering them. We're going to start to create an index of all of the different sessions. So this morning I wrote to Janie and I wrote all the different critters that we've done so far. And we're going to start writing patterns for those critters. The patterns are going to be available in the membership. But in the meantime, if you want to go looking on Facebook, how do you find these sessions? So what I found up from, from Elaine Morton the last time, Elaine Morton was able to search on Facebook. So I'm going to just go over on Facebook on my other screen and I might end up sharing my screen. It depends what I find, but I want to show you how you can search Facebook to find the different sessions that I have held. So if I go to fusible rotary cut applique with Sue Pellant, uh, we are right now, we're live right over there. So I don't want to put that on because it's going to be very distracting with the sound. But you can see that over here on my, I'm going to share my screen. Um, over here on Facebook, I am live. So you're going to see me over there live on Facebook. There is a slight delay. Um, but there's also uh, closed captions. So that might be very helpful for people. But what I wanted to say is that if you use this little search button right here, if you use this little search button, you're going to see, you're going to be able to search this group. And um, Elaine was able to search for lobster. And hopefully if I put in the description, my Larry Lobster episode, actually that's the episode from uh, a couple weeks ago when I was going to the Red Sox and we talked about Larry Lobster. But before that, we had another um, session about making a lobster. We also have our pictures of Scudic where we had lobsters on our table when we arrived at our um at our workstations in Scudic. So anything that comes up with lobster is gonna show up here. And you can see that this one, I've got the fabric all ready to go. So this is the video right here where I worked on the original lobster. So I just want to share with you that you can search, let me stop that screen share, 
that you can search any of our Facebook sessions to find the specific things that you are looking for. So not only did Elaine search on the lobster for us, but she searched on the crab and she found that. And I've dug out my pieces for the crab so that we can add a crab to this underwater scene today. So you could do fish and you'll find the session where we made the fish just a couple of weeks ago. We did some um, underwater um, grasses and some plants, but I'm looking up at my wall right now and they're very insignificant. So we might be doing some more work on some kelp, some grasses, some plants, but we need to talk about designing your own projects. This is obviously something that I'm excited about designing, but what's happening is I am not really ready to design this project because I have to decide, am I going to go realistic? Am I gonna go kind of cutesy or kid-like? Am I going to go with something that's really fun or something that's really serious? So how am I going to design this under the sea quilt? So this is something that I want to talk to you about as far as designing your own projects. Unless you're going into this, and I've got to get this other um, video off the screen because it's so distracting for me. Let me just close out my other screen. Okay. Um, if I go on to, and I'm going to show you my screen again, if I go on to um, the uh, something like coloring pages, if I search on coloring pages on um, Google, then I can find printable coloring pages and what I was looking for was a clownfish. Somebody said you should put Nemo in your underwater scene. So I found this clownfish uh, Nemo uh, drawing and I took a look at that and I said, you know, it's kind of cutesy. It's really cartoony. Isn't that interesting? When I change my screen, it's not sharing what I'm currently looking at. So let me share my screen again. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I found this coloring page, which is from Finding Nemo. And that little Nemo clownfish, he's not too cartoony, but the Dory character definitely is. You know, she's talking, you can tell that it's a character out of a movie, an animated movie. So I don't want to use this particular drawing as inspiration for my quilt, because when you look at my quilt, that lobster is much more realistic. Even the fish that I created in those pinks, uh, those pink colors, it's more of a realistic looking fish, or it's not quite as cutesy as this drawing. So you really need to pick a theme for your design and a mood for your design. Is my design gonna be lifelike and realistic or is it gonna be dark and kind of scary as an underwater scene, maybe with a shark in it or something a little bit more edgy? Or are we gonna keep it light, fun, beautiful and um, more realistic? So I have to make that decision but when I saw this drawing today, I wasn't too excited about the fish. They were too cartoony for me. But I had been wanting to make a jellyfish. And look at that jellyfish. Now that is inspirational for me. When I saw that jellyfish, I said, yep, that's a great idea for my pattern. So when I'm looking for ideas for a design, it's just like an artist. My sister is a fine artist. She's a painter. And she's not going to dream up a painting out of her head and start painting it in watercolors. By the way, my sister just won second place in the transparent um Transparent Watercolor Society Art Show, which is a huge national show with international competition. And she just won second place. She's amazing. But she doesn't take all of her inspiration from within. She will go out and search for inspiration. Now, in 
art in the art world, your inspiration has to come from your own competition, comp, uh, compositions. So she can take her own photographs and make them into beautiful watercolor paintings and then share that with the world. But she can't take a professional photo, say she goes to National Geographic and finds a beautiful animal photo. She can't use that photo for her, her inspiration for, for that painting. Inspiration, yes, but she can't reproduce that photo as a painting. So that's kind of the same with quilters, right? We can use a pattern and make a quilt as is, a duplicate pattern from what another designer has done, and that's perfectly fine. But if we're looking to create our own design, we need to look within ourselves for that inspiration. And we need to find the right mood and the right character for that design. Once we have that in mind, we can look online for inspiration like I'm doing with this cartoon picture, but I'm not going to copy that cartoon picture, but I am going to use it for inspiration. I want to create a jellyfish. I've known that all along. And look at that beautiful jellyfish. I love the way he's flowing. I love the shape. So I want to just use that as for inspiration and find my own way to create a jellyfish. That way, because it's my own and I'm totally changing it, I'm not gonna copy this. I'm not gonna put this up on the wall and I draw it and copy it and just create it in fabric. That would be taking somebody else's art and making it my own. I don't wanna do that, but I can certainly be inspired by this cute little cartoon drawing and make that my own with my own style, my own mood. I'm gonna to totally change this jellyfish. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today was working from inspiration or working from an actual design that you want to recreate. If you want to design your own design, say you're gonna do a pictorial quilt that needs to be your own picture. You can't take somebody else's picture and just reproduce it. That's a, violate, a violation of their copyright. Now, of course, you can ask for permission. And one time I was making a quilt based on a children's storybook, and I asked the author and illustrator for permission to use that, and that's what became um, Eve's Garden. So that was inspired by a, book, a children's storybook, and I asked the author and illustrator, it's the same person, the author and the illustrator, I asked for permission to use that design in a quilt, and they gave me permission to do that. So that's where there's a little gray area, right? You can use somebody else's design for inspiration. Mine was a totally different medium. I'm doing it in fabric. He did it in paper. He did uh, stenciling on paper. So we're totally changing somebody else's idea, yet it's still their idea. So that's not good. That's not, you're not welcome to just take somebody else's idea, change it up a little bit and call it your own. So this underwater scene is, is completely coming out of my head, but I need design inspiration. So that's when I go out looking for pictures, actual photos of a lobster under the sea, actual photos of fish. Um, but I'm not going to recreate a scene. I'm gonna take little bits and pieces and different design elements and pull them all together. Okay, so we need a style for our quilt. And I've decided that my style is gonna be a little bit more realistic. You know, I'm not a I'm not an artist. I can't paint a realistic face, fish that somebody would think is a real fish, but I can make it realistic rather than cutesy. So that's what I'm going for. Now, the second thing we have to talk about is the scale. How big is this design going to be? Well, I really like this little 12 inch panel and I'm just gonna work from here. I'm not gonna zoom in. I think you can all see me okay. I love this little 12 inch panel right here. I've got a separate panel made because I 
did something incorrectly. I was supposed to make a 36 inch panel and I ended up making it 24 by mistake. And so I had 12 inches of those fabrics left over. So I made an additional 12 inch panel. Now my thought was to break this panel up into three sections and do a triptych, which is a piece of art that has three sections. But I'd really like to do one middle section a little bit bigger and maybe a section on either end. Or maybe I'm going to be a little crazy and not do a triptych at all, but just do two matching panels, one small, one large. That would be unusual. I haven't seen anybody do that yet. So, you know, that would make it a little bit my own as well. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to be joining these panels. Now the waves aren't going to match up quite right, but the colors do match. So maybe I could camouflage if I joined those two panels and camouflage that seam with some applique. Or maybe I'm just going to leave them completely separate and do two separate panels. Wouldn't it be pretty if you had a wall that went around a corner and you put one small panel maybe next to a window and then on the other side you put the big panel? That'd be rather cute, wouldn't it? So I'm, I'm thinking about leaving it as two separate panels. But what we want to talk about is the scale. When I first started making the kelp down in that corner, I was working on my, um, my design board and I was working on a real small scale when I cut out those leaves and those little tiny vines. To me, those are way too small and the, the, the size of the lobster just doesn't make sense in combination with the size of those plants. Now, of course, there's plants in the ocean that are huge, like kelp, and there's plants that are gonna be really small. I'm sure there's even minute organisms that I won't even be able to see. So they do have a place in this pattern but they're not quite the scale that I think I'm gonna go for. So now I've changed my scale. Instead of working really, really small, like those little tiny leaves, I'd like to work with some big undulating curves that make some beautiful kelp that waves through that ocean. And so I think I'm gonna go rather large scale so that I can use that lobster as is or I can shrink that lobster down. I made him with the eight inch leaves galore tool and I might need to shrink that down and use the five inch leaves galore tool for the, I forget what this, uh, it begins with a C. I forget what this part of the shell is called, but for the large part of the shell, I might end up using a five inch curve and making that lobster again in a different scale. Then I wanna make sure that all the different elements are in proportion to each other. Now, of course, you're looking at an underwater scene. Things will be distorted by the water. Things will be further away. They'll be smaller. Things will be closer up like that lobster. He's right in your face and he's going to be up close and he's going to be big. So we have to think about the scale of all of the different elements in our composition and how they work together. Yes, carapace, that is correct. Is that Elaine? She always comes up with these words so quickly. Um, Beverly says, congratulations to my sister. It's a huge accomplishment. It is. And my sister is Gina. She's Gina Croce. She's married to Jim Croce, not the Jim Croce. Um, and her, um, her design studio is called Hummingbird Studio. She's in Swansea, Massachusetts. And if you want to follow her on Facebook, uh, you can find her at Hummingbird Studios or at Gina Croce. So anyway, just in case, her artwork is amazing. And the two paintings that she submitted to that show were from our trip to Italy five years ago when we took my mom to Italy. Uh, with my siblings. That's where her inspiration came from. She was uh, snapping pictures the whole time we were there and she did two shopping scenes from Capri and uh, one of those is one of the paintings that won second place. Congratulations, Gina. It was so exciting. She told me last night because we Zoom every Monday night 
with my siblings and my mom. So she told me last night, I'm so proud of her. It's so exciting. So let's get back to designing our underwater scene. If you missed how I put together the water, you're certainly going to find that in one of my sessions. So you could do wavy fabric. You could search for wavy fabric as I was showing you how to search. Now, one of the things that I love about that underwater scene so far is the little tiny fish. I want a whole lot more of those little tiny fish. But I was really thinking, how can I make them shiny? So I want to show you a technique for making things shiny today and I might cut out some of those little fish with this technique but really what I want to work on today is that beautiful um uh doo -doo -doo, what is it called the one that's over here um the jellyfish now if you live in New England you are familiar with the Portuguese man of war. It is a huge jellyfish that has all these long tentacles and they will zap you. They will get you if you are in the water and you come in contact with their tentacles. It re it's really a stinging sensation. I haven't had it personally, but it really does hurt. So you don't want to be in the water when you see a Portuguese man of war. But the whole top is like that jelly consistency and then all those tentacles going down below are wavy and really interesting looking and I'm going to share that picture with you again because it really gives a fabulous rep representation of what that jellyfish would look like in a quick sketch. So let me share that with you one more time so you can see what I'm going for. So the top of that jellyfish, that round piece right there, I know that we can cut that with our tools. And look at the way these lines are going down in that jellyfish. I bet you we could do that with our quilting. So I'm not gonna be too concerned about those lines, but I just wanna get the shape of the jellyfish. It's kind of a oblong, like an oval shape, but it's a little odd shape. So we're gonna play with that shape. And then those tentacles are what I wanted to point out to you. It's amazing with just a couple of squiggly lines how the artist can capture what that Portuguese man of war looks like under the water. Um, it really does look like those ribbons falling from the top of the jellyfish. So let's stop that share. And now I want to go on to my overhead camera. So uh, before I do, one of the ways to make things shiny, which works really well with our Misty Fuse, is working with Angelina fibers. So I've done this before on Sewing and Slippers with Sue, but because I need to do it personally to make this jellyfish, I'm gonna walk you through the process so that if you missed any of our sessions on working with um, the Angelina fibers, you can see it now. Now, of course, you could go into that search bar and look for Angelina fibers, and you'd probably come up with a previous session where I did that. Now, I'm gonna need my Hearts and More tools to cut my Angelina fiber creation into the shape of the jellyfish. So I'm gonna to go to my overhead camera right now. Let's see if I can find that. I think I have to go to settings, my overhead camera, and yes, there we go. Now it's a little bit out of whack. Let me just get that positioned properly. And I'm gonna walk you through the process of working with the Angelina fibers. So let me get my camera down where it belongs. And by the way, in this little bag, when I was looking through my critters, I've got a box that has all my critter pieces in it. In my box, I found all of the pieces for making a crab. So I'm not gonna make the crab again today because you can find that online, but I will show you what that crab looks like if I can find where I put the crab. So I think that crab is probably in my critter box. So 
let me pull out that critter box and we'll see if we can find the crab that I made a different time. So anytime I work on critters, I just throw them into my little critter box and I found this beautiful fabric with lobsters on it and thought that was another great inspiration piece for me if I want to make another lobster. So I've got the lobster fabric ready to go. So if I want to make that lobster a little bit smaller, that is ready to go. And now I'm searching for that crab. I'm not quite sure where I put him. Sugar, I think I pulled him out already, but I don't know where he is. Okay, so we'll move forward and not work on, uh, not show you the original crab, but I certainly can make another one using the pieces that I have already cut. So we're gonna put this aside with the lobster, and should we have time to work on that crab, we can assemble that one when we have time. Then I'm going to, or first I should say, I'm going to work with the Angelina fibers in order to make our, um, our, uh, jellyfish. So I have some other pieces of Angelina fiber fabric that I have made. And I could simply use some of these pieces. These would make beautiful little shiny fish. I can certainly use some of these pieces, but I think I want to play with my colors of Angelina fibers. And I think I want to make a whole new piece. So this is a clear Angelina fiber. And if you look at it closely, it's got that iridescent look, and it looks like tinsel. It looks like old-fashioned Christmas tree tinsel, but it's much thinner. So you can get it in bundles, you can get it on Etsy, and you can get it in all different colors. So because my background is quite dark, I think that I only want to work with these light colors for my jellyfish. So if I look at my light colors, look, I've got some beautiful blues, but I don't think the blues are going to show up on this pattern. So maybe I'm going to go for some of these oranges or pinks or even maybe this metallic copper color. So how do I know which Angelina fibers I'm going to use? I'm really just going to play and figure out what's going to look best on my background. So I've been collecting these Angelina fibers for years and I have a whole box that I keep them in. So when I am ready to play with Angelina fiber, not only do I have my Angelina fibers in there, but I've also got some black Misty Fuse. And of course, in my sewing room, I always have white Misty Fuse. So we are gonna be using Misty Fuse to create our Angelina fiber creation. Now, because all of the colors that I want to use are quite light colors, if I use black Misty Fuse with those light colors, it's gonna make them very dull. So I don't want to use the black Misty Fuse this time. I'm going to use my white Misty Fuse. So let's see, I just had it here, and here is my pressing board. So I've got some other fabrics here I'm going to use. I've got my white Misty Fuse that I'm going to use. Okay, and I also pulled out some fabrics that might be fun to play with. I could add Angelina fibers to some pretty fabrics, and that might give me the nice body for my uh, jellyfish but I don't think so. I don't think I have enough of any one of these fabrics to make the body for the jellyfish. Although this piece right here may work out, so why don't we play with this piece right here? And if that doesn't work out, I'm just gonna make the Angelina fiber on the Misty Fuse, just the fibers by itself on the Misty Fuse. I think that's gonna be the look that I'm going for but I'm gonna try several things before I make a final decision. 
Then I'm getting into my box that I call Fancy Threads. I have all of these different, and it's quite a jumbled mess, but I've got all of these different fancy threads that I may be able to use for the tentacles when I make my jellyfish. So I love this color right here, and I don't need a whole lot of it, so I'm just gonna pull some out, and look how curly and beautiful that is. That would make a gorgeous jellyfish if I went with the blue tones on that jellyfish. So I'm gonna cut a piece off from here. Let me just grab my scissors that are over here. Let me just cut a piece of this off and see what else I might have. I have some silver embroidery floss. Again, what a mess. I like to really work with a piece of cardboard and keep all of my pieces nice and neat. But, you know, over the years it all just gets mixed up. And so now I've just got this silver floss. It's all mixed together. But I'm going to just pull out some of that silver floss and cut it off. And then I can sort this out another day. But I knew I had this pretty little green curly Q ribbon. Look at that green curly Q ribbon. It's gathered down the center, so it's quite interesting looking. Now it's very three-dimensional. I'm not sure that's the look that I'm going for on this piece, but I'm gonna pull it out anyway so that after I pull out some of the um, elements that I might use for tentacles, I can kind of match my uh, the body of the, um, the jellyfish with some of these decorative elements. Maybe some little beads would be fun to use as tentacles coming down off the jellyfish. So I really have to look through and see what I have. Oh, I've got these gorgeous, thin um, organza ribbons, and that light blue color is wonderful. So I'm looking through my bin to just see if there's anything that speaks to me that would be in the colors that I'm looking to use for my jellyfish. So I think that's enough inspiration right there. I'm just gonna leave that there for now. I'm gonna put this bin aside and I'm gonna put all of these very creative design elements uh, near me so I can kind of design my colors based on those little design elements. But before I do, I wanna bring those over to my piece and see if they even show up. I don't wanna go through all this work of making that jellyfish and then find out he just disappears on the colors that I have for the background. Did you notice that I pulled out all of these um, blues and greens and look, they might just blend right in. I'm not so sure that those are gonna be the colors that I need for my jellyfish. I put my jellyfish up here, those elements kind of just blend in, don't they? What if I went with the pinks and yellows instead and did something totally contrasting to what's already here? These blues, especially those, um, those soft blues that are uh, see-through, those are hardly going to show at all. So I think, even though I love these colors and they really have the feel of underwater, they're not gonna show up. So I need to go searching for some golds, some yellows, and some oranges. So this kind of greenish blue, um, Angelina fiber, where I thought we were gonna go with this, if I look at it on my design wall, it just blends right in. There's really nowhere except on the darkest colors where it might kind of show up. So I don't want to go with the greens and blues and I'm glad that I went over to my piece before I started working with those Angelina fibers. So let's do that now. Let's pull out the oranges and the pinks 
and just try to do something a little different. So I could certainly go with some pinks and yellows. Here's some gold. Um, here's a beautiful little pink silk ribbon. I even have this piece that's all sparkly. I don't know what I would do with this, but the colors are kind of nice with this, aren't they? So the top of this might make a really interesting jellyfish. So I'm going to keep this in mind. I'm not going to use it right now because it's not the jellyfish I want to make. But we have all of these different elements that we can use for inspiration. Now I even have this gold braid. And this gold braid, when it gets all untangled, has all kinds of interesting textures in it. So I might even use a piece of this gold braid and untangle it a little bit and play with that. So pinks, oranges, golds, you can see that those aren't really my colors, but I do have a little bit of the gold organza and I've got a little bit of this um, copper color organza. But those aren't normally my colors. My colors are more the um, jewel tones. So most of what I have to work with in here are jewel tones. So that might mean a little trip to the store. Now I did have this piece of fabric. And even though it's not a big piece, I have this pretty yellow spot right here, that yellow and green. So I'm gonna roughly cut that out and maybe play on that as well. Try two different ideas and see what's gonna work. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut out this little piece right here and I'm going to grab my applique pressing sheet. Now I've made mine on a board and those people that are coming to retreat might just see this board again when I come up to Scudic. Um, so I am going to work on this pressing board. I'm gonna take a little bit of my uh, fusible. I don't want a whole lot because my jellyfish does not have to be very big. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that fusible. And I'm gonna take a little bit of fabric that I want to use. And I'm gonna put the fabric, I'm gonna put the fusible on the front of the fabric and half of that fusible is on the front of the fabric, half of it is just on the pressing sheet. What I'd like to do is play with that Angelina fiber with the fabric in the back and see what that looks like and just plain on its own. Now I'm going to need a second applique pressing sheet. When I do play with the Angelina fibers, I need to cover it with a pressing sheet before I press. So I've got my fat goddess sheet out and I'll be ready to use that as soon as we design our um, Angelina fibers. So I really love this gold and yellow. I think that this is a really pretty sunny yellow and I think it's gonna look great on that fabric. So I'm just taking the Angelina fibers and separating them a little bit with my fingers. I think I'm gonna put some aside and do a light coating to start with of the golden Angelina fibers. And over here, I'll do it a little bit heavier because this, the um, jellyfish made with just Angelina fibers is gonna have to stand on its own. That has to be a piece of fabric on its own where this one is just embellishing a fabric that I already have. Now I do love this peachy pink color and I think that that will make a nice little sparkle in there. So it comes off as like candy floss and all of the pieces of the Angelina fibers are lined up with each other. I don't want that. I want my Angelina fibers going in every different direction. So I just tease those Angelina fibers between my hands to make them go in all different directions. Now some of the Angelina fibers are falling onto my palette here where I'm playing and designing what this jellyfish is going to look like. And I'm just going to drop those Angelina fibers together 
and see how the colors are blending together. And I think that's beautiful. I already like what's happening. I could certainly use a little bit of this really bright pink as well. And these are really iridescent colors. You're getting a lot of blue picking up in the pink. Um, so you will pick up different colors depending on what is around. I think it's picking up the blue from my blouse. So I'm going to put a little bit of pink in there. Now this one I like quite a bit. I think that's looking awfully pretty. But over here I might want just some white iridescent I, or clear, that clear iridescent. So let me take a little bit of this one. Now these fibers are different. Some of these, this is called tinsel. This has a very different texture than the true Angelina fiber. So this tinsel is more crinkly and I like the texture of it, but it is quite different from the Angelina fibers. Now what we're going to get here is this layering effect of all of the different colors and we really have no idea what this is going to look like until we do that final press. So I'm just kind of laying it out and if you want to see it from the side, we've got a real thickness here. That is about one inch thick here at its highest point. It's just layers and layers. It's like cotton candy. I'm going to go with this. I like this composition right here. I just want to make sure that all of the tinsel, all of the Angelina fibers are on top of the fusible. Then I'm going to cover that with an applique pressing sheet. And I'm going to press that all together with a really hot iron. Before I do, I'm going to put away all the extra Angelina fiber. So I'm going to take my little plastic bags and I'm going to gather up all this fiber and put it away. Now this makes a mess. I'm going to have fibers all over my station right now. So after I'm done working with the Angelina fibers, I've got to do a good cleaning of my workstation. I don't want all these fibers on top of little bits of fabric like my lobster fabric here because it will attach itself the next time I iron that lobster fabric and you don't want those fibers all over everything. So after you work with this product, you've got to give your sewing room a really good cleaning. You will end up finding these little tinsel pieces, these little shiny pieces everywhere you go the day you work with it. So you've got to give it a really good cleaning so that it doesn't show up in all your future quilts. It's a little bit like working with glitter. Not quite as bad, but it's a little bit like working with glitter. So now I'm just ironing that tinsel really, really well. Now if I did this between layers of an applique pressing sheet, if I had folded over this goddess sheet, then I would be able to do it from both sides. And I'm not able to do that because I'm working on the pressing board. So not the best use of the pressing board. I normally use the pressing board when I'm building up design elements, like when I take all these blue pieces to make my crab. I would do that on the pressing board. So those pressing boards are really handy to have. And if you don't have one already, you can go to Iris's website, uh, the Misty Fuse website. It's attached, incorporated. Go to the Misty Fuse website and you'll be able to get instructions for making one of these pressing boards. Now I am going to clean off that board and make sure there's no tinsel on it. And I'm going to come up to you on the camera. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get this off. So you can see all the beautiful colors on the pressing sheet. See how flat it is now. We're going to peel this off the pressing sheet. I just want to wave it around a little bit and get it a little bit cool. And we're going to see if we can peel that off the pressing sheet as one piece. Yeah, so there we go. We're getting started. All right, here we go. So not only did we get the iridescent piece 
like this with all of those different pretty colors in it, but we've also got that fabric where we've added the iridescent colors as well. Now remember, these are all activated with heat, so we can't iron this piece of fabric any longer. It is what it is, so you're gonna, you're gonna use this. Now, on this side of the fabric, we have the Misty Fuse. Over here on this fabric, we don't have any Misty Fuse. So I need to put a piece of Misty Fuse on the back here before I cut this out into the shape of my jellyfish. So I'm gonna go back to that Misty Fuse. This one has Misty Fuse on there already, but there's nothing wrong with adding another layer. So I'm just gonna cut straight across once again and add the Misty Fuse to the back of the fabric. And I'm gonna add a second layer of Misty Fuse. So there's one holding all of the Angelina together that might be sufficient to use to stick your jellyfish onto your, um, onto your piece, but I'm not gonna chance it. I'm gonna put another layer of Misty Fuse just to make sure I've got enough to adhere my Angelina fibers down to my piece. So let's just press that together, get that misty fuse on the back of the fabric and on the back of the Angelina fibers. And now we're gonna be able to cut out our jellyfish and have that jellyfish fuse to our background fabric. So here's the little cartoon drawing of the jellyfish. Now again, it's just a cartoon drawing, but what I'm inspired by is the shape of that jellyfish. I think my five inch hearts and more is gonna be too large, but maybe the four inch hearts and more is gonna be just about the size that I need in order to make this jellyfish right here. Even the three inch is a nice size if I make an oval with it instead of a circle. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Now in order to find the shape of that oval, what shape are we going to make that jellyfish? I'm gonna work, start working with just some scrap pieces of paper. Whenever I print a pattern and it doesn't look good, I recycle my paper. There's always one blank side here. So I'm gonna work with that paper and I'm gonna create an oval. Well, how do we create an oval with the leaves galore, excuse me, with the hearts and more tools? I'm gonna to fold my fabric once. I'm gonna fold my fabric again. Then I'm gonna put the fold so that they look like an L. So there's a double fold here and a double fold here. Everything else out here is open. Now I can use my tool to make any size oval shape or lots of different sizes. So let me trace this with a pencil. Now the secret to getting a nice oval is lining up your folds with the markings on your board. And then you're gonna line up the edge of the Hearts and More tool. The straight edge of the Hearts and More tool goes parallel with the lines on your board. So let's play with this. Well, first of all, I know that my jellyfish is going to be an odd shape, so I don't need to make a perfect little oval, but I do wanna make sure that the top of the jellyfish is rounded. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't go all the way over to here and make kind of a heart shape by going back down again. I simply want to start with an upward facing curve and go down this way. Okay, so I'm gonna start up here and just go down. Now, I could cut that out with my rotary cutter, but because I'm working with paper, I'm just gonna uh, trace that and cut it out with scissors. Because right now, all we're do is doing is playing. I have no idea how to make that shape, but we are going to figure it out together. So let's open it up. Okay, well, it's nice and wide. It's a little wider than the one on the paper and it's equal around all four sides. This jellyfish is bigger here, and then it kind of tapers for the top of the jellyfish. So I want it more tapered 
this way. So how would I accomplish that? Well, I like the bottom. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm just gonna fold this way and see if I can make that tapered shape with one of my curves. So let's go ahead and use the five inch curve. It's a little more graceful curve. And so this time I'm gonna just take my rotary cutter, if I can find it. Okay. Yep, there we go. I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna gradually taper off the top of this oval. And there we go. That is a nice shape for my little jellyfish. How does that look? Not too bad, right? If you can imagine all these little lines coming up to the top with uh, quilting, I think that that is gonna look just fantastic. So how did we do this? We used the three inch curve on the bottom quarter and we used the five inch curve on the top quarter. So I can fold my fabric into quarters and on the bottom quarter I can cut from here to here with the three inch curve and from the top quarter I can cut with the five inch curve. But how big does my rectangle need to be? Well, let's measure this oval. So if I measure my oval with my regular ruler, I've got a four and a half by one, two, three and a half. So my original rectangle needs to start off four and a half inches by three and a half inches. So let's try to do that with our fabric. I think my fabric is probably cool enough now because I left it on the pressing sheet, but it's, it's getting cooler. Now look, I had extra misty fuse out here. It's making quite a mess, but that's okay. I can trim off all that excess misty fuse. Now I need a show of hands. Who likes just the iridescent and who likes the fabric under that iridescent color? So this is choice number one with the fabric. And this is choice number two with just the iridescent color. I want you to vote now and choose either number one with the fabric or number two, just the Angelina fibers. Now I'm gonna cut the Angelina fibers into a three and a half by four and a half inch rectangle. And I think I've just, just, just got enough. I think that's good. So three and a half high, four and a half wide, three and a half by four and a half. Okay, this is still a little bit tacky. Remember, when we use our misty fuse, we need to let that misty fuse cool down for 15 minutes after we press it. You know that I just pressed this one, so I don't have 15 minutes to let that cool down. So we're gonna have to be creative as we are cutting. Now, I would love to do three and a half by four and a half and use these lines to make the lines of my, um, to make the lines on my jellyfish, but I don't have three and a half. I only have three inches, so I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna do three inches and I'm gonna try to do four and a half, but it's gonna be a little odd shaped. That's okay. Let's see if I can do three inches and then do the four and a half this way. You know, I'm really cutting it close, but we're gonna play with this and see what I can do. Um, normally, I would just cut a three and a half by four and a half inch piece, but I've got all these lines on the fabric and I really wanna use them. So I'm gonna get pretty creative with this piece and do something a little bit odd. So um, the three and a half, I'm gonna cut off this little dark piece up here. I don't think I want that on my jellyfish. So I'm gonna go three and a half this way. Okay, that's good. Now I don't quite have four and a half, and I don't want this dark area on there. So I'm gonna trim off here, and then I'm gonna measure four and a half over from that section. 
Okay, so I don't have a full rectangle, but remember this top is going to be tapered anyway, and the bottom is going to be tapered, so I think I might get by with an odd shaped rectangle. This one will be easier. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging. Let's deal with the challenging one first. So let's go ahead and fold our fabric together. And I'm going to fold it with the fusible side out. Remember that fusible is still warm and it's going to stick to everything should I um, fold that fusible side to fusible side. So now let's see what I've got. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half inch marks. So I want to find the center of this piece and I can find the center by folding it again. I'm going to make a little mark on my board at the center. I can always erase that later. Okay, so here's the center of this piece right here. So I'm going to take my three inch curve and I'm going to curve the bottom of that rectangle. Okay, so from the bottom to that centering piece. the three inch? I did use the three inch, but I think he's a little bit wide, so I'm not going to quite go all the way across. I'm just, I'm not going to cut all the way across because that's going to go back up again. I'm going to start at the arrow and just cut off this bottom corner. Okay, then from the top corner, from that half inch mark here to this top point right here, I want to cut off this piece. Now I've got a little triangle cut off anyway, but now I want to make it round. So I'm going to use my five inch curve and I'm going to make that rounded, but more gracefully rounded than the bottom corner, which is more sharp. So let's go ahead and round that off and see what we came up with. And wow, look at that. All of the lines are placed quite nicely. I'm pretty happy with that one, but let's go ahead and cut one out of this piece as well. Now, when I have two layers of Misty Fuse and all that Angelina fiber and the fabric, this is pretty thick. It's not delicate, it's really kind of thick, but this is a wall quilt. I'm not gonna be snuggling with this, so I don't mind if it's a little bit um, stiff, right? It doesn't have to be fully soft because I'm not going to be sleeping with this quilt. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. On that bottom corner, I'm going to use the three inch curve and I'm just going to cut off that bottom corner because I really like the shape we came up with. So just cutting off that bottom corner so there's very little waste right there. And now we're going to go from the, the mark, that halfway mark, to the top edge with the five inch curve. And now we've got that exact same shape again. That would make a beautiful little pumpkin, by the way. That shape is a great pumpkin shape. But now we've got two different choices for our um, jellyfish. So let's look at some of these squiggly little lines that will be coming down off of the jellyfish with the golden colors, with maybe some of the pinks, uh, maybe some of this gold braid, or even some of the pink beads. I think that these could be really fun embellishments to come from the bottom of the jellyfish. I also like this golden iridescent color here. That's really pretty. Now, I could also just take some of the Angelina fibers and I could put this on an applique pressing sheet I can press the Angelina fibers coming from below the jellyfish, and if I built up some of those, that might be a good trailing. Um, uh, I wouldn't make it solid like this one. I would just be very light with this and just have it trailing down. Now, there are different thicknesses of much more like uh, tinsel that you would have at Christmas time. So if you used a little thicker tinsel for the trail on the jellyfish, for those tentacles, you could honestly get by with just using the tinsel and not really using any of the threads or the ribbons. But I kind of like the look of the threads and the ribbons, 
So that's what I'm gonna opt to do. So let's bring this over to our design. Oh my goodness, we're past 12 o'clock. I get so carried away when we're designing like this. So look at these two beautiful little jellyfish. I'm gonna go put those up on the wall so you can see and you can vote on which one you like best. So let me grab a couple of pins here and I'm gonna pin my jellyfish up here. One here at the top, one here on this piece and I want you to decide which one you like best. So number one is the jellyfish with the fabric, and number two is the jellyfish with just the iridescent um, Angelina fibers. So I'm not so sure how well you can see that. I will, I'm gonna have to snap some pictures with my camera, and I'll put those pictures down in the comments so you can vote for your favorite option. Now I've taken up too much of your time today, but I hope you have had fun designing with me. I'm Sue from Sue Pellin Designs. I do have applique school starting this evening. If you're having fun with me designing quilts and you want to learn more about rotary cut applique, come to this evening's applique school session. You'll be able to find that applique school session on my website. It's suepellindesigns.com. So you can go ahead to suepellindesigns.com, sign up for applique school, and come join me this evening. We're going to spend another hour this evening doing a demonstration on fusible rotary cut applique. So I hope I'll see everybody there at applique school. In the meantime, check out your favorite jellyfish, and I'll continue to work on some of these embellishments for the tentacles. I can't wait to see how this jellyfish adds to my underwater scene. So thank you so much for joining me. It was really fun, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. I hope that you have fun sewing in slippers. See you soon.